Hi, I'm Bobby from Dig Coding, and today I'm going to show you how to use Google's Places API in a Django project. Let's jump straight in. So you've probably seen this on numerous websites and web apps, that when you start typing in your address, the form knows what you're trying to say and knows what address you're typing and it pre-populates it. Well, this is Google's Places API. I've built an app here that you can see on the screen that enables you to, or allows you to uh, incorporate that into your project. So if you look here, we've got a sign in, sign up and forgotten password. Let's quickly sign into the web app or sign up to the web app. There we go, let's go. Okay, if you've seen other videos that I've put on YouTube, um, you'll notice that this is just an extension of the user app video. There we go, we're signed up. And then we've got a user profile, so create a user profile. And if we start typing in, let's go one, two, three. There we go, what it does, it uses the Google API to predict the address that you're trying to find. So I've typed in one, two, three, if I put the four, it will come up with a whole different range of addresses. The defaults to the UK, but you can change it to anywhere in the world. So if I now click on one of these, so one, two, three, four, Colchester Road, what it does, it takes all of that information, places it into a Django model form, and then if I add a phone number here, and click update, it will add all of that information to my profile. It seems pretty easy on the front end, but there's a little bit of work to make this work in the back end, and that's what I'll walk you through now. So this project is on GitHub. I will add the link to GitHub in the description of this video. If we go to GitHub here, you can see it's called Did Django Google Places API. So in the readme file, you've got some very basic instructions on how to get this up and running on your machine. You need to create a directory, a virtual environment, fire that virtual environment up, download or clone the repository, and then install all of the requirements. There's next to no requirements in this project. If I open up the file, with other than what comes out of the, uh, the box for Django, with pip install six, which is used to generate tokens, which is not really essential for this app, but it's quite handy so you can actually see how this works in real life. Uh, so if we go back to GitHub quickly, uh, yeah, once you've pip installed the requirements, you then need to go to the settings py file and add some information about the email provider and the Google API key. So a prerequisite to this application is that you need a Google API key. You can get that from the Google's cloud platform. And what you'll need is the Places API, the Maps JavaScript API, and the Geocoding API. Activate those APIs is very, very easy to do. But once you've activated them, get the key and then come back to the project. Assuming you've got it, let's go into settings.py. You need to import OS. We need that for the static files on this project. We need to install the users app into the installed apps. And then other than that, we do very little else. With database, we're using SQLite. SQLite, we've changed the language code, but you don't need to. We've got static files, so we've got static files, DERS, static root, which is over and above what comes out of the box. That is because we are using some static files to make this app look decent online. We have got a login URL, a redirect, and a logout redirect. Again, very simple stuff. And then what we've got is the email backend variables. We're using Google on this um, tutorial, but you can use other providers. And these are the details that you need to um, to get it up and running using Gmail. Everything normal, smtp, uh, gmail.com, port is 857, TLS is true, the email host is the email address that you're sending it from, and what you will need is a Google app password. Now I have done a video on my channel about how to get one, it's very, very easy. Get that password and get this up and running. Now the current site variable is hard-coded in this, but you can use get current site from one of the Django libra libraries. And what you'll also need is a Google API key. That is what you get from Google. So get that all saved. The URLs, not much going on here. We've got the if settings.debug, so the, um, the, it adds a static URL to the URL patterns. 
which is required. Um, but all we've imported here is the settings and static from Django Conf, and we've got the path users. So very little go in there. Um, I have already followed the instructions from uh, GitHub. So I've got it up and running. If I open up a CMD, which I've already got here, you can see that I've, um, you can see here that I've migrated, I've made migrations, I've migrated everything across and I'm running a server. That's how I've got this up and running to this point. Let's go back to the code. Right, so static, we don't really need to go through that. You've got some basic JavaScript here, you've got some CSS, but we have got a JavaScript file here called Google Places. Uh, that has been pulled from Google itself, um, and I'll go through that in a second. Uh, so if we start in users, so this is the user app that we've added to the project. Admin, and starting models. So what we've got, we've got a user profile. So this extends Django's user model. And how we uh, create this profile is we use signals. So when somebody signs up, it authenticates that user using Django's user model, and it fires a signal in the back end to create a user profile. So that's how that works. We've got some, we've got some fields here, telephone, address, town, county, postcode, country. We have got an updated and timestamp field. I always add these to my models. Just allows you to uh, keep track of when uh, objects have been created or updated. User, so it's a one-to-one -one field. So this is where the um, it's using Django's model, user model, and it's there's a field there that links the user model to the user profile. It's a one-to-one -one field with an on-delete cascade. So if somebody was to delete their profile, delete the user profile also. We've also got longitude and latitude in here as fields. That's what's being populated by the Google API. Is active and we've got email verified and has profile. These are just fields that I'm using to flag certain things in, in a user journey. Uh, and then we've got user token. So again, this is over and above what's needed for a tutorial such as this, but I've kept it in here because like I said, I want this tutorial to uh, demonstrate how you can use an API in a real app. So this user token model allows us to generate tokens against a user to verify an email or update a password. So that's models, this is the signals file. So this is what uh, we're using the retriever and post save. And we are bringing in, we're using the decorate, decorator receiver and using the sender as the Django's user model. And if it's creating a profile, if created, then it, then it creates a user profile. So it's not very simple, not very, it's not very difficult, easy for me to say. Um, you register that signal in, in apps. So you've got here ready, self, import, user signal. If you don't have it in there, the signals won't work. Simple as that really. So that's the models, they're the signals, um, URLs. Uh, we've got URL patterns here. This is registered in the uh, main directory. So you've got include users, URL, namespace is users. App name users. That's how we um, we append these user patterns, the URL patterns to the main URLs. So our homepage is a sign-in page. We've got sign up, sign out, forgotten password, an email, account, and profile. Profile is where all the magic is happening. We have also got a verification URL here that allows us to handle the email verification and password um, verification as well. Updating a password. So we then got uh, views.py, so we're bringing in a whole bunch of things, including the forms. So in fact, let's look at the forms first. So we're using a lot of um, Django forms. So these are built in. So we've got the user creation form, authentication form, set password form, and password reset form. Now I've got links here to the docs. Um, you should read them. Django does a lot of great stuff in the background that it, it saves you writing a lot of code yourself. So for instance, my user form that I've got here, I'm, it's a class that I'm pulling in the user creation form. So Django is allowing us to just take in a first name, last name, username, password, and password too. And when you save that form in the view, it just updates that user. So it creates a user. It saves us having to do all of that hard work in the, in the views ourselves. So we've got a user form, an auth form, so that's what we're using to authenticate, so to log a user in. 
got username and password. Use profile form, I'll come back to that in a second. Request a password form. This is, this is pulling in a password re reset form from um, what's built into Django already, and it just uses an email field. Forgot a password form, and you know what? We don't even need that two-step form. That's a hangover from the Twilio app that I've also built. If you haven't seen it, view the video, it's great. Sorry, I've got my phone going off there. And uh, let's come back to this. So user profile form. So it is just forms.model form. So it's a model form that we're using. And it's got a telephone field, address, town, county, postcode, country, longitude, and latitude. Now they, it, this is uh, using the user profile form. So essentially when we, save, when we save this form in the front end, it will update the user profile. So, but if you noticed here, Normally I've got a widget and I've got placeholders and everything else, but these are actually hidden. So when you look on the actual page, if we go to profile, you can see all we're seeing here is address and telephone. And when you start typing this in, uh, sorry, one, two, three, what it then does, it then it pulls those hidden, um, hidden fields out. So when we're rendering this to the front end, we're rendering it as a hidden input and then we're using JavaScript to convert it to a text input and then fade it in. So the widgets are slightly different. If you've seen any of the other apps and the tutorials, you'll notice that we don't normally use the hidden input, but we are in this one. So there are forms. We're pulling them into the views here. So we're importing all of the forms and then we've got a sign up, sign in, sign out, a forgotten password, an account, a profile and an email oh, and verification views. So what have we got? We've got two, four, six, we've got eight views. So uh, on sign up, we're just using the user form. These are tied in with Ajax. So we're using Ajax to make an asynchronous call to the views. So we don't have to update or we don't have to reload the page. It does all of the, the back end uh, saving of objects and the page doesn't even change. So that's uh, that's what we're doing on this. So it's if request is Ajax, Ajax and request dot method is post, then do something. And you can see all we're doing here is we're getting the form here, so the U form, user form, and if valid, we're saving it. That's all we're doing. But we are also because we're using an email as the username, we're saving that username to the email field. Also, you don't have to do that, but that's something I like to do in the apps, and then it creates a message and a result and it fires it back to the JavaScript. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. Sign in, very easy. This is the auth form that we talked about. So it's a username and a password, and then it uses Django's authenticate um, method there. That is, it is built in, I've got the docs link here. And then we use login. So you notice we haven't, we're not, um, we're not actually saying what backend we're using, which you do, some, if you're using two different backends, so if you're using all auth or anything like that, you would have to stipulate exactly what backend you were using on the login. Uh, and then we've got, we, we're creating a token error. Um, that is for um, passes a token error parameter to the URL to handle the error message. Yeah, so we are pulling that, that token error variable is going into the context that we, and we're using that in JavaScript on the front end. So I use that, I'll look at that in a second. Sign out, not what's going on, it just logs out the user. And because we've got a login, uh, redirect URL in the settings file, which is here, it will redirect them to users signing when they log out. I'll just save that forms. Views, I've got a password, using the request password form. So it's, it's not doing anything funky, to be honest. We're just using Django model forms. Uh, we take, we're bringing in the data from the front end. So we're rendering forms out on the front end. And when we save those forms, it's updating uh, objects. And if we're using the built-in model forms uh, from Django, it's actually far, it's doing a lot of the um, hard work for us. So it's uh, creating passwords, it's sending emails and things like that. So uh, in this one, what we're not using, in fact, is the email function that is in the request password form. We're actually doing, we've got a bespoke model here that we've used and it's called create email and that create email is in mix-ins. So we'll, we'll come to that in a second. But it just takes a few keyword arguments to get it working. You know, you set the email account, uh, who we're sending the email to, the token, the URL safe. 
So it's converting it into a, um, it's an encoded token that goes into the URL, which is sent to the user. What else have we got? We've got accounts. So this is where you're directed to when you sign in. Uh, we've got a profile form. And this is what's happened. This is where we're handing them the user profile form in that URL profile. So the only views, I don't need to go into them in great depth. Sending an email, here we go. So this is actually a view that sends an email uh, for registered users. And then we've got the verification. So this handles the, so when somebody goes to the URL with the token and the um, uh, UIDB64, it uh, uses, it forces text. So it does some, it does something here with uh, force text and URL safe base 64 decode. And if it can find a user from the token, from, uh, from the user token, if it can find one, then it will um, allow us to verify that user, whether it be an email token or a forgotten password token. If it can't find a user, then it will fire an invalid, um, invalid token error, and that's where they get redirected to sign in. So if you remember when I looked at the sign in view, we had this piece of code here. Well, that's where it's picking up the token. So if there is a token error that is sent through as a parameter to the sign-in um, URL, then it fires off the token, we can do something with it in the front end. So there are the views. Uh, I won't go into too much detail there. So mix-ins, we've got the form errors, that just handles the form errors from model forms, and it gives us it into a text string that we can actually do something with in a message. Redirect params, and then we've got token generator, and we've got a create email function. And then lastly, we have got, what do we now need to look at? We've got the models, we've got that, da, da, da. that's everything. That's the back end, that's all we need to look at. So now, if we look at templates, we've got two email templates. This is what handles the token. So these are the two email templates that we're looking at in the mix-ins. So this is the create email mix-in. And depending on where we're, Oh no, here we go. So it comes in the view itself when we're creating an email. When we're creating an email, we're actually selecting which uh, um, template to use. So password email here. So password email, that relates to password email HTML in our templates. And we've also another one called a verification email as well. So that selects the type of email HTML file that we're using. So this is the base HTML. I don't really need to go through this in great detail, but these are the fonts we're using, pulling them from Google. We've got a main CSS. We don't need to go through that for this tutorial. Uh, we need J uh, jQuery. So it's a library that we're pulling through. We've got main.js. The main.js here is where we handle the show password function, which is in the sign up and sign in. You've got the uh, custom form submit post. That's what handles um, loading on submit buttons on forms. Email verification, it's just an Ajax call. And then we've got some form controls here. This is where I'm handling all of the Ajax, which uh, works with the back end. So if we just focus just on the profile, so this is the user profile Ajax call. So it's sterilizing all of the data that comes from the form, uh, which is the user profile form. It's firing it off to so the URL action, that is going to be on the actual HTML file itself. So if you look at form, profile form, we've got method post, action profile. Go back here and look at the post. So the URL will be profile, method, post, and the form date. The data is form data. So that's the sterilized form data from the form. And if we get, um, if, it's, it's a, if the Ajax call is a success, what it will do, it will convert the, the submit button back to a the, the previous text rather than it saying loading. You've got an alert, that whatever the alert may be, it might be perfect, it might be okay, you now need to do X, Y, and Z. And then it um, redirects the user to the account URL. So that's what we're doing, that's how we're handling the Ajax call to the back end. Uh, but what we now need to look at quickly is the Google Places. So this is really the main JS that is doing all of the hard work on the front end. So what we're doing, we take, we're looking at this script. So we're getting the script first and foremost. Um, I find that if I just try and put the, the script in the header of the base URL, or the base HTML, sorry, sometimes there's 
uh, loading issues. So I tend to use this script here, so it's a get script. So we get the script from Google using our API key, which we're passing in from the back end. If we look in views, we look in the profile. So, so it's right at the bottom here somewhere. Email. So here we go, profile. What we're doing, we're pulling in Google API key here from settings Google, Google API. So that's what gets the script. What we then do is we um, in it autocomplete. So we get the ID Google address. So we, so we get the element using ID Google address, which you can find in profile. That's this field. So this is the field that you're tapping in the address. Okay, and the ID is ID Google address. So in the JS, what it will do, it'll add the um, JavaScript, the necessary JavaScript from Google API to do the um, predictions of the address into that field. We then have an on places change. So every time you make a change into that field, it then carries out this code here. So it does the autocomplete. It uses geocoder. This is why you need those three APIs. So if you remember, I look, uh, I opened up the API model here. We've got geocoding API, maps JavaScript API, and places API. This is why you need those three because without them, it won't, you, it will not do this piece of code here. Sorry, it will not do this here. So you, that's why you need the geocoder. That's what pulls out the longitude and latitude. So we need that. If it finds the, if it finds the, um, sorry, if the status is okay, it will pull out the longitude and latitude from the results and add it to the fields that are in your HTML. Um, if it can't find a place, it just adds the placeholder again. But if it can, it then, we've got, we don't need console log there. Um, it then does two for loops. So it goes through the results. So it's a JSON response that we get from um, Google and it flows through using a for loop and it pulls it out. If it can find street number and the root, then at the bottom here, what it does, it creates a, um, a number and address that goes to the ID address field in HTML. If it can find postal town, administrative area level two. Now this is assuming you're in the UK. These, these could be named slightly different if you're in the US, for instance. Then it looks for country and it looks for postal code and it adds them to the necessary HTML fields in the form. And then what we do is with this piece of code here, this piece of JavaScript, what it's doing is finding all hidden inputs. So we're using jQuery, finding all hidden inputs and it does a loop, a for loop on all of those inputs that it can find. It ignores the CRSF middleware token field because you don't want that showing up. Um, uh, it changes all of them from hidden text to, to um, sorry, type hidden to type text and then it asks, adds a class hidden element to each of those um, input fields and then we fade in everything that has a class of hidden element and that's why you can then uh, see them on your um, on your screen and then it removes disabled from the button itself so we go back to the screen just update quickly if I click that it won't work the button if you go into inspect elements and click update, you will see, sorry, if you click on, you'll see that it's disabled. It's disabled, it won't work. So when we finish the, the Google JS script, it removes that disabled from the button. It allows you to then submit the form. So let's change this again. Let's go one, two, five, eight. Let's, well, Huddersfield, there we go. One, two, five, eight, eight, Manchester Road. Click on that, it changes everything here. That's your search. So that's your query to Google. Address, town, county, postcode, country, longitude, latitude, and telephone. And they should marry up with the model that we've got. Telephone, address, town, country, postcode, country, longitude, and latitude. So when we click update, that should now be uh, enabled. Click, uh, there we go. So it's no longer got disabled. We removed it using the JavaScript there. And just save that and if we click update your profile has been updated and we're now in Huddersfield there we go that is the app um, it's what are we 24 25 minutes long sorry it took a little bit longer but I like to go through the actual app itself show you the code show you how it all strings together because I find that some of these tutorials don't actually walk you through the code base itself and I think it's necessary if you're trying to just slot this into a project that you're working on 
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and please like, it's very helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.